giant size annuals, these kinds of labels that get put on comics, do they have any meaning anymore? I'm curious from hearing from uh, comic shop owners or people who work in shops, but I don't think so. I think that uh, most customers, these terms no longer seem to matter. Let me get into it. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and this is going to be like uh, nails on a chalkboard or cringe for a lot of people who are longtime collectors, to which the terms annuals, when you say annual, you think of things like, uh, you know, the the evolutionary war. Uh, oh, <laughs> do you remember that? The, the, the whole battle uh, over the serpent crown, do you remember that? Um, these kinds of annual events used to mean anything. Hey, do you remember the time when the West Coast Avengers and the Avengers had uh, you know a, a kind of a two-parter story that included a baseball game usually to start and then shenanigans would unfold after that. Do you remember those things? Well, that's what annuals used to be, but today annuals seem to come out randomly. They're not in the summer. They're not. Uh, there's really no marketing about them. You get bigger issues, smaller issues. It, it really doesn't matter. And so maybe you might argue it's time for some of these publishers to stop. You know, just go ahead and drop the whole concept. You know, right now we're getting giant size X-Men as a series of one shots. And the term giant size X-Men, of course, has huge connotations for long term comic readers who remember that that's how, you know, characters like Colossus and Storm and Nightcrawler and others got introduced into comics, let alone the X-Men. That, that title meant something. Today, it's kind of a nostalgic throwback, but nostalgic for who? Most customers just don't even really understand that this exists, or if they do, it's so far removed and so different of a product that they really don't connect. Customers don't come in shops and say, I really need that giant size X-Men comic because that reminds me of the time that the giant size X-Men comic came out in the 70s, and it kind of ushered in an era of X-Men dominance. That's, that, that really doesn't happen. But a lot of these terms are, are very traditional terms within comics. The problem is, I think, that the publishers and the creators haven't really done anything to you know, keep these terms alive other than anything more than very basic window dressing. Look, I make no mistake about it. I'd love for annuals to mean something. I'd love for that to be kind of a special event. You know, once upon a time, the annual was not a throwaway comic. It, it actually mattered. And, you know, in, in many ways, the annuals were a more expensive connected event. The uh, the Evolutionary War, which played out, had a connected story. Uh, there was definitely a kind of a beginning and an end, and then a bunch of titles in the middle that kind of crossed over to it. They weren't required reading. This is one of those cases when, you know, they said things like, you don't have to buy them all to understand the story. That was actually accurate. You, you didn't. But it, it still, it was, it was a connected story, and it, it cost more in the shops. And, uh, and it mattered. Um, it, it, you know, it actually had significant, you know, consequences in that annual that actually mattered to the story. Today, annuals are often used as, uh, you know, filler material. Like they've, they've commissioned a story from an unknown creative team who's going to tell a one-off, may never get you know, recognized or referenced by the actual series writer. And out it goes. Um, they should mean more. And every now and then there's this attempt, like they did uh, Acts of Vengeance style, uh, you know, basically where the the characters were were going to fight villains they haven't fought before. I think what like Miss Marvel fought like the Super Scroll, or I, I don't remember. But that's that's the point. I think that was last year, or maybe yeah, it was, and it didn't matter. Like none of these stories really had any lasting impact on the characters. And unfortunately, I think the term has been so devalued that even if, uh, you know, the comic company claimed or, or actually did make a story development that actually mattered in the, the ongoing title, I don't think most readers would pay attention. They've been conditioned to ignore it. And so I ask, does this matter anymore? Do you as a, as a reader, as a customer, do you, uh, do you care if something's labeled, you know, a, a giant size or annual or or yeah, and this is like the the worst of all. Do you care if it's a number one issue? 
given how many title the times some titles have relaunched, does the fact that it's number one hold any merit at all for you as a reader, as a collector? Does it really matter? I think that whether it, you know, and, and I've heard, by the way, some creators claim that uh, Netflix ushered in this new kind of model where the, the, the numbers and the comics and the labeling and all that kind of stuff doesn't really matter anymore. It's all just kind of just content, just coming out, just lots of content. And I think there is some truth to that. I do think that in this world of kind of streamed entertainment where you can just get whatever you want and binging shows and all the rest, these, I, the idea of a special issue, uh, the idea of a kind of an annual comic holds a lot less importance in people's minds because they're used to just kind of downloading and binging. In fact, I'll take it a step further. Um, I've heard recent comic shops talk about how, you know, basically um, customers come in and they're like, I want to binge a comic. And the comic shop owner is like, oh, okay, well, what are you looking for? And it's like, I, you know, just... I'd like all the issues of something, you know, give me as big a run on Thor as you can. And they're just reading kind of 60, 80 issues at a time and calling it a day. The, the one that got the, that got me with this is My Hero Academia. It's manga uh, series, but there's this whole new model of just binging uh, My Hero. And you go and you get all the volumes and you, you just read them all in one sitting. And then you're done. And the crazy part is the series is still ongoing. You know, it's not done yet. So people will just read to its current state and then forget about it for two to three years. That's how the comic's being read and consumed now. Is that you? I, I'm, I'm just, I'm curious to kind of see and test this, this theory that, you know, the, the events and the titling and the numbers and the labeling have been washed away as important. You know, will you sign up for an annual thinking you're getting something special? Oh, yeah, it, I don't think so. I, I think this is an, an, an kind of an old term that no longer holds meaning. And in order to get it back, the, you know, the comic publishers, the companies are going to have to really invest some time and energy into making these things feel special again. What I don't know is how long it took for things like annuals to matter. Because in the 60s, the 70s, there were annuals. But as far as I can remember, and from what I've heard and kind of looked up, initially, these comics weren't considered special. They, they weren't, uh, you know, they were just another issue. It wasn't something that really kind of got people excited as a, as a thing to look forward to every year. Um, is, that, uh, is that now just kind of the way? Anyway, uh, let me know. Uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you're a retailer, is anybody coming in caring about this stuff anymore? You know, that's the other question I have. Does it, does anybody, does anybody care? Leave a comment below, like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, follow me on social media. Let me know what you think. Is, is this just a term that, you know, only means something to kind of longer term collectors at this point? I don't know. Maybe so. And have we lost anything if true? Thanks for listening.